everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Rachel Ray and today I have my very esteemed and special guest, James. Say hi. Hi everybody. This is Mr. Ray and today we are giving you another episode of Mysteries with Mr. Ray aka Theory Tuesday and as always I have no idea what we're about to talk about because he's very secretive and won't tell me because he wants my genuine reaction. But while we're doing so, I am going to be working on my diamond painting, which is The Ghost Maker, and I have all the details about it and everything that I'm using down below in the description. So please check it out if you're interested. Otherwise, I'm going to fire up this light pad and we're going to get started on a brand new section while James tells me stuff and things. Let me just grab my ceramic cutter. What are we, what are we talking about today? Today we are going to talk about the most haunted castle in Ireland. Ooh. <laughs> 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 oh. Also, hi! We're doing this as a premiere. So if you're live in the chat with us, hey. And if you're watching this on the replay, let me know with hashtag replay in the comment section. Blue. <laughs> Spooky. <laughs> What do I have? What? What's on me? Oh, I was going to make a joke about the dog. Oh. <laughs> so you got something on your elbow. I got, I got something <laughs> on my lap. <laughs> um, yeah, so today we're going to talk about Lep Castle. Lep. Yeah, and it's a uh, castle in County Offaly. Offaly? Yes, and it's awfully haunted. It's an, It's awfully far away. It's, well... Yeah, it's awfully far away. But it's <laughs> it's actually... It's, it's dead centre in the middle of Ireland, like. You that's know? still pretty far away. Yeah, it's pretty far away. Like, um, So that's the crack. I meant to do this last year, but we didn't get time. Oh, really? Yeah, I was looking at it, and I can't remember what it was. I think... Anyway, we're going we're gonna to do Lep Castle. We're going to do Lep. And if you're interested, we have loads and loads of these types of episodes available on the playlist, which I will put up in the corner. Yeah. So go check it out, and if this, you haven't already. And this is like the Samhain special month. Yes. Yeah, where we do the lead up to Halloween and it's all kind of Irish stuff, you know? Yeah, it's coming. It's Ooh, so soon. Halloween's at its way. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that's it. So do you remember like last Halloween we talked about um, Loftus Hall, which is the most haunted house in Ireland? Oh. This is the most haunted castle in Ireland. Great distinction. I think it is. Um <laughs> I mean if you haven't seen the Loftus Hall one like you can you can kind of go into that and you know that goes down all the usual kind of rabbit holes and stuff like that but mm -hmm. um so but this is like an old school traditional kind of castle, you know? Okay. Yeah. Does it have a murder pit? It has quite a few murder pits <laughs> actually. <laughs> Not just one, but it has several murder pits. Murder pits are like these little things that are above the entrance of the castle, if you've never seen one, and then you could like throw tar down on They're, your enemies or whatever. Yeah, murder holes. Oh, holes. And it has murder holes too. Oh, right. It has murder everywhere. It's like murder. Wall, it's wall to wall murder. There's <laughs> murder everywhere. Wall to wall murder. Murder in the building. Murder everywhere. That's how you get to be the most haunted castle in Ireland. <laughs> so this is Lep Castle, which is spelt Leap. Leap? Yeah, leap. It's like, spelled L-E-A-P. Yeah, leap. Like leapfrog. Yeah, but it's pronounced lep because oh. this is Ireland. Oh, right. You know? Yeah. Um, Pronunciation rules are different here. Yeah, and I, well, I, I, this has to do with Gaelic because there is, when I saw it first, um, I knew that it was lep because there is a place in West Cork called lep mm -hmm. that's also spelled leap. Mm -hmm. And I haven't looked into it enough to know what the why it's anglicized like that, hmm. but it's anglicized like leap, L E A P. Just to confuse us, really. Yeah, and it's you know it's just the way it is, isn't it? <laughs> and it's it's like so. This is this is a um, this is kind of a castle, and it was built in twelve fifty, sometime around about twelve fifty. Oh, you know, vintage. But you know the way these castles work, like. There's kind of like someone will build like a wall and then over the centuries, all of the different people that that inhabit it will add extra bits on and stuff like that. One thing we love is a good home renovation project. Yeah, but do you know, like, because this is quite a common thing with with castles, 
because because they're the most important kind of structures within a feudal society. True. You know, and loads of different people take them over and for whatever reasons, they add a wall, they add another keep, they add all these things, you know. Really so it's Kitchen, been developing. mud room. Yeah, so it's it's definitely recorded um, about 1250. Treehouse. As being the home of the O'Bannon family. O'Bannon. O'Bannon, yeah. Mm. And they were like minor warlords, you know, uh-huh. within this area, within the middle of Ireland. And, but it's, it's actually definitely 100% built on top of an earlier Iron Age fort, mm-hmm. which would have dated back to maybe just before or just after the common era, you know, hmm. but there is some archaeological evidence that I didn't really look into either, that it's actually was built on top of an earlier and even earlier, like, Neolithic site, Ooh. which would place it like a couple of thousand years ago, you know. So it's people so, building on top of these areas, you know. Lots of death. Um, I yeah, like that's <laughs> that's the way when, when I started I'm imagining it. <laughs> when I started reading about it, there's this um John Banville novel, and I I remember being like really young and reading it like, and they were describing about how. About how, you know, you go into this place and you go into the chapel and you can see how all the walls were built like this kind of onion or something. And it's enclosing something sacred and frightening and terrible, you know. Yeah. And that's kind of, the, you know, that kind of piece of prose kept rolling around in my head while I was reading about this place, you know. Mm-hmm. So it was it was built by the O'Bannons anyway on an earlier, definitely an earlier Iron Age site, you know. Okay. And then that's in 1250. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's loads of different battles, you know. At one stage, the Fitzgeralds hold the castle, you know. And by 1557, the O'Carroll family have the castle. Okay. And then they build a keep, you know, which is your traditional Norman, um, kind of Hiberno Norman keep, which is basically a square room where there's three or four stories you know yeah and it's got battlements and parapets and all this kind of thing you know okay um and they go and build that and then they hold on to it until about 1659 when this family the Derby family who are like an anglo-irish family you know Mm -hmm. they take it over then at that stage and like the Derby family are like a big naval family there's like Vice Admiral George Darby is one of their people. Mm. Um, Admiral Henry Darby, he's another one of their people. And like, it is impossible to be further away from either of the shorelines than where this castle is located. <laughs> but they're a huge naval family anyway. Right. <clears throat> Other people in the na- in the Darby family is this guy called John Nelson Darby. Sometimes you just want to retire from... It's, I don't know, it's just so strange, like, that, that, that they that they should be such a huge naval family and live so far away from the sea. I guess they're like, whew, you know, when you when you take a vacation, you just want to be as far away from work as possible. Yeah. You know, <laughs> going home. <laughs> I'm turning the phone off. You can't get Sick me till, of this. You're, you can't get me till after eight on Monday. <laughs> um, you won't get me till the afterlife. Peace. Other, other famous... Um, Darby's are John Nelson Darby. Have you ever heard of John Nelson Darby? Sometimes called John Darby? No. John Darby is an Irish um, preacher. Okay. Um, Have you ever heard of an eschatological concept known as the rapture? Yes. John Darby is one of the founding intellects behind the rapture. Huh. Yeah, isn't that interesting? That is interesting. I've always kind of been fascinated by him, like, to be honest. Mm. And when I read his name, I was like, there is no way this is the same <laughs> John Darby. And it is the same John Darby. No way. Yeah, and then John Darby's grandchildren, um, or grandnieces or nephews, I could never establish it. And I wasn't particularly interested either, to be quite honest. Um, they, um, like, that's... Um, uh, Mildred Darby mm-hmm. and let me check my notes. Excuse me, crinkle, crinkle. 
Need more diamonds. Oh, I have neglected to write down the name of her husband. But her husband. <laughs> but trust me when I tell you that he is not important. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so there's there's Mildred Darby anyway. And Mildred Darby, and this would have been the late 19th, early 20th century. Okay. And John Darby then would have been like the uh, kind of early to mid 19th century, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Um, so Mildred Darby then, she was big in kind of occult circles and stuff like that. Okay. And she wrote like kind of uh, what they would call like gothic revival um horror stories Ooh. Bram Stoker would have been one of these guys yeah. Mary Shelley's Frankenstein and stuff like that that's all kind of gothic revival yeah. kind of stuff you know what I mean yeah. and she would have wrote those kind of stories what's she, her name again her name is Mildred Darby hmm. but she would have written under the name Andrew Mary interesting because a lady writing stories a lady writing stories Ooh. why who would want to a read a story is about the vampire about a lady <laughs> actually most of her stories are about ghosts oh. and it's well let's let's continue on then anyway right, right? okay so the the derbies um of you know the derby couple that kind of succeeded to the house you know what i mean uh-huh. like they basically inherited the house they would have taken it over sometime in like the late 19th century. So in kind of the 1890s, that kind of way, you know. Mm-hmm. And they would have started renovating kind of in, I suppose you would say, in earnest, you know. Er- earnest? Yeah, like in, in earnest, you know what I mean? Like they would have been quite earnest about, like they would have been. Oh, yes, yes. Am I saying that correct? <laughs> they, would have, they would have started <laughs> renovating like and... So in 1896, um, you know, uh-huh. they started kind of renovating all the areas, yeah? Mm-hmm. And then one day they're up the top of one of the guard towers in the in the castle, you know? Oh, dear. And um, they, they're they knocking down a wall and they uncover this doorway <gasps> that's behind the wall. Mm-hmm. You know, on the third floor, like. Yeah. And... They basically open up the door and they find that it's a small little guard's room. Don't open the door. Don't open the door. And they go into the guard's room and there it is. It's been sealed up for God knows how long. They don't know what's going on, you know? Yeah. And then in the floor, they find a trap door. Oh my God, don't go in there. And the trap door is a little spiral staircase. No, 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 no. (laughs) But it's filled up with rubble. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah? Yeah. So they spend ages, like, excavating the rubble. Why? You know, they're, like, filling up buckets with rubble. It's been happening for hundreds of years, filling up with rubble. Oh, my word. you got to say, why did someone seal this door? Why? Why if did they seal the door? Don't. Duh. So eventually, after a couple of months of work... The audacity. They manage to get to the, to the bottom of the stairs, you know? Oh, my and God. And they know that it's two stories down. Uh-huh. So it's on the ground floor somewhere. Yeah. And there's a door... And they open the door and it's a wall. Oh. So they're like, okay, so where does this lead? So they start going all around the castle and eventually they find a room and they're like, this must be the room, you know? Yeah. That it comes out in and they do all kinds of, you know. Testing. Whatever way that they had to work it out, you know? Knock on the wall. And they're like, look, the door has got to be somewhere in this wall. So let's start taking down the wall. Oh my God. So they start taking down the plaster on the... Because this is dry stone, you know, it's it's dry stone walls, you know. Yeah, I mean? yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And they start taking down the plaster on the walls and they find the doorway. Mm-hmm. But they also find the skeleton. Oh, God. I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> <laughs> so they're like, oh, what will we do? <laughs> what will we do? What do you think they did? Oh, they probably just kept going. Yeah, they just they just <laughs> they just built a door frame around and put a door there, and then they they plastered up the skeleton oh back in the wall. Gosh. Yeah, yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> oh, we're just getting warmed up. <laughs> so, as you can imagine, this kind of place where there is like skeletons in the wall and stuff like that has a kind of dark history, you know? Yeah. Do you remember the O'Carroll family I said like they took over sometime in the in like the fourteenth 
15, 16th century, like 1559. 15th they took over. century. Yeah, 1559 they took over. And, mm-hmm. um, they were famous for um, fighting with their neighbours, and but also knowing a bargain um, when they saw <laughs> one, you know? Mm-hmm. So the problem with... It's fighting... Fighting wars is kind of like investing, but for the feudal class, right. you know? So the important thing about investing is you never invest your own money. Mm-hmm. And the important thing about fighting battles with your neighbors is you never use your own men. Right. Yeah. So they hired a load of lads from the O'Mahony clan. Mm-hmm. And they had them come and fight their battle, you know? Of course. And there was about 55 guys. And then at the end... When the lads came back and said, yeah, that's no problem. We're after beating the pants off these guys. And here's two fields. Um, you know, the O'Carrolls were like, that is so cool. Come on in. Come on in. Let's have a celebration. So they start having a big celebration meal, you know. The wine is flowing. They're eating. Like, do you know where you pick up that big turkey leg and you just take huge chomps out of it? Mm-hmm. They're all doing that. There's turkey legs for everyone. Like they're chomping, they're Except swilling it was like beer. Pheasant. Pheasant, I guess. Yeah, people are high fiving each other. Pheasant legs are really, really little. It's fifteen fifty nine, or sorry, it's fifteen fifty nine. <laughs> so people are like going, "Hey, I, I hear of a land, a land far to the west, where they have turkey legs for everyone." <laughs> What's a turkey leg? It's like, picture a pheasant leg, but like much bigger. Way bigger. <laughs> and um, at the end of the night, then they're like, oh, look, let's have a toast or whatever. And, you know, they have a toast and it doesn't really matter anyway, because they've actually just poisoned all of the O'Mahony guys. And they stuck one of them in the wall. And that's, well, who knows? Like, who knows? So they, but they have this history of being absolutely ruthless, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. Like, why pay a mercenary when you can have them fight your battles and then you can give them a turkey leg and then they're dead and you don't have to pay a dead man, you know? That's pretty much it. So that's kind of like the brutal... the brutal way that they dealt with people, do you know? Yeah. Um, in... In kind of the 15, um, in kind of the middle of that, that time, like the 1560s and 1570s, like the O'Carroll family, like the, the patriarch of the family passes away. Okay. And it kind of, you know, this this kind of like battle for succession, you know, ensues. Yeah. Ooh, it's like in three. Yeah. And you've got all these siblings, these O'Carroll siblings that are at each other's throats and stuff like that, you know. Okay. And then one one time one of the um, O'Carroll brothers who's kind of in line for the throne, mm-hmm. but he's also a priest. He's he's there. There's a chapel. There's a chapel on the second um, floor of the castle, you know? Mm-hmm. And he's inside there and he's like, oh, where's my brother? Where is he? This is, uh, this is terrible. I can't wait any longer. And he just balls on with the mass, you know? Okay. And his brother shows up. And of course, starting a mass without your brother or without, you know, the presumptive heir to the throne is a big no-no and it's an awful insult. So he goes and slits his own brother's throat over the altar and there's blood pumping out. Wait, wait, who? The guy that showed up late? Yeah. He's like... Slit the priest's throat? The priest is his brother, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And he's like, this is an affront I cannot put... And he slits That's his not throat. Very Christian. <laughs> no, it's not. The people at the the people at the mass go and try and stop him. Much slaughter ensues. Like, and ever since then, it's known as the bloody chapel. Is the priest in the wall? Well, <laughs> this is on the second floor in kind of the northwest corner of the castle. Okay, you know, yeah, and. I suppose one of the things about the castle as well is that like all of this stuff kind of happened when the when the Darby family were doing the renovations and stuff like that, you mm. know. Um and that would have been kind of in the eighteen eighties or eighteen nineties and stuff like that. Mm. Yeah. And do you remember I said Mildred Darby was very interested in um 
uh, kind of the occult and she wrote um, kind of gothic horror stories and that sort of yeah. thing. Yeah. So she would have also kind of um, around about... Oh, I have notes on it. Let me, let me just look these up. Yeah, she would have also like around about, say, uh, the kind of... 1912, 1913 or whatever, mm-hmm. she would have started doing seances and stuff like that. I knew it. Did you really? I had a feeling. She would have started doing seances and stuff like that. And then that's where a lot of the stories about the ghosts and things like that start. Off. Mm-hmm. You know? Mm-hmm. There's, um... This is, this is, uh, this is, like... Well, not medieval, but I'm going to use the word medieval advertising for her book. There's, I have, I have so much text here that's quotes from her and various <laughs> other people that stayed at the castle. Uh-huh. And they're all from a thing called the Occult Review, you know? And I, But I don't think you can really... She's like the ghost, who's the ghost TV show in America that's terrible? I, oh, Ghost Hunters, is it? Yeah, I mean, it's, look, oh, man. I'm going to be honest with you, there's, like, a lot of this, a lot of this comes down to her and her buddies writing stories about their experiences, you know? And, like, people as well. There is a human remains but I don't think you can in a castle. I mean, I don't think you can really overstate how, um, how popular occult stuff was at the beginning of the 20th century and at the end of the 19th and the beginning of the 20th century. I don't think it's possible to overstate how big it was, particularly with affluent people. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like those, those of because affluent. It was, because like witchiness was acceptable if you were rich, but if you weren't rich, but you were a witch. Yeah. I mean, you it, were persecuted. Yeah. That's I mean, like the, the in the same circles that she was moving in, you would have had like William Butler Yeats and mm-hmm. you know what I mean? It's like in the, the Hermetic Order, the Golden Dawn. And literally they went and slaughtered people for those beliefs. What do you mean? Oh, yeah. Like outside of Britain. I don't know if I don't know if they did that around here but are you see- but they they probably did though i, I mean no. if there were if, but i don't know if there were people here but like definitely in like louisiana and like places in the states they but, there were uh, salem blah 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 are you talking about um like puritanism being, being, in, in yeah the, like the, in the late sa- salem which which trials in 1600s yeah oh yeah okay there's, I mean, like, there's there's famous ones in Britain as well, like the Pendle Witch Trials and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um, it, actually, the first um, the first person to be burnt at the stake as a witch happened in Ireland. Hmm. Um, that's actually what I was going to talk about next week. <laughs> okay, we'll say that. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> yeah, so she's, I mean, like... <laughs> I don't think you can really like part of the popularity of this place as the most haunted place in Ireland probably has to do with the amount of Collier Minches in um, the occult review and stuff like mm-hmm. that. You know what I mean? Um, well, they did. I mean, they did find a skeleton, and yeah, I mean, somebody was covering up a murder. They they they're doing they're doing all this like they found a skeleton there, and then. I guess there's there's lots of other people. I should have thought better about how I'm going to structure this. But do you remember when they were redoing the place and they found the secret doorway? Yeah. And that was in like 1898? Yeah. They, they lived there happily for another um, 24 years, you know? Did spooky things start to happen? Yeah, I mean, they have loads of spooky things like... Oh, the house of spooky things. It's the house of spooky things, like. So, but. How long have we been recording? I can't even see that. Okay. Yeah, keep going. Yeah, so (laughs) there's, I mean, there's loads of spooky things happened, right? Yeah. And there's this lady called the the Red Lady. And she comes along 
Um, she basically um, is dressed all in red. Mm-hmm. And she doesn't make a sound, but she has this silent scream where her mouth is open and she's clearly screaming. And you can see how stressed her face is. Creepy. And she's holding a knife menacingly Ooh. above her head like like she's going to stab you and stuff. What's her name? Um, they call her the Red Lady. Oh. Um, she's dressed in like 15th or 16th century clothing. Mm-hmm. And they think that she was during the O'Carroll's reign. They think that she was someone that was taken prisoner. And, um, Do you have a picture? Uh, no, there's no picture of her. <laughs> what do you have to say? Like? What do you... She's, a, she's an, an apparition. Like. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you have to say it like that? <laughs> oh, fine. I mean, I was going to Google an image and put it in. I don't know. There are, I can I give you I can give you the red lady yeah yeah so they <laughs> they think they, did you do that to put the photo yes of course it did <laughs> so they they think that she was a woman that was kidnapped and that um she gave birth in the castle Ew. while she was kidnapped oh no and that the O'Carroll family were like no no we just need a hostage we don't need any extra mouths to feed so they took the baby from her and that ever since, oh, and that she then um, menaced them with the knife and ended up stabbing herself. And now she comes around trying to menace anyone that comes into the place with a knife. She happens in a specific room. There's even um, there's a quote from a guest of Mildred Darby's from mm-hmm. the Occult Review. Mm-hmm. Um, and she says totally reliable source but but that's it it's all it, it, it's all built around this magazine and and Mildred Darby <laughs> you know what I mean and um, it's on the 31st of October I went to my bedroom at 11 p.m. during the night I think it was probably about uh 12 45 a.m. I subsequently saw by or sorry during the night I subsequently saw by my watch it was 12 45 a.m. Um, I felt I felt that I was awakened by someone in the room. It was pitch dark and at first I could see nothing. And then I came wide awake and my blood became extraordinarily cold and my heartbeat rapidly increased in intensity. Immediately before me, I saw a figure, tall, and I thought it must be Mr. Darby for he's the only one as tall around here. But then I noticed that a glow emanating from the creature was coming and it was not quite as tall as it was previously and above its head held a knife and a silent scream I turned on what is it then she goes to light the candle and the apparition disappears you know what I mean did they, have, did they even have witches back then yeah they did yeah, yeah, did def- they yeah definitely like this is this is about 1910 like oh yeah but like for a 25 year period <laughs> you're one dark <laughs> she's yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> but there's a glow emanating from it um, what else is there then? Oh yeah, um, there is, um, there's a whole group of ghosts, they call them Emily and Charlotte, and the old man and the governess. And Emily and Charlotte are these two kids that... Are they the kids from The Shining? Um, no, they, they think that they come from different time periods, but they became friends after they were ghosts. <laughs> because so she's she's wearing really old dress, you know. Yeah. And people see her, and she goes playing around in the um, what would you call it, the courtyard, you know. Mm-hmm. And then she runs up onto the battlements, and then over to the corner, and she's gone over the side of the wall. Ooh. And they all run up after her, and there's no one there. Or some people have been outside of the walls, and they've seen a little girl on the inside skipping. And then next thing you know, poop, she's Whee! over the side of the wall. She goes straight towards the ground and disappears before she comes at the end, you know? Yeah. And they call her Emily. And then there's another kid who seems to be from about 100 years later, so maybe the 17th century, that kind of way. Mm-hmm. And then because she's dressed differently. But they're, they're friends because they play with each other. Yeah. You know what I mean? You can see them out there having a good time like kids do. Jumping walls. Jumping you know. walls and all that. But she has um she has a, an injured leg and she drags her leg behind her. It doesn't seem like like she maybe she's got a palsy or something like this, you know? Mm. And then maybe she just had an accident. <laughs> there are two other ghosts then that come from an even later period again because they're like 
dressed in like early Victorian clothing and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And they call that the old man and the governess, Mm -hmm. you know, and the old man is often seen in the main in the main room after you come into the castle. And he'd like be sitting in a chair smoking a pipe or whatever, you know, and then the governess, the governess is sometimes berating him, sometimes with the kids, sometimes he's with the kids. It's like a bunch of ghosts. That just kind of got to know each other, you know, they come from all these different time periods, you know, and they're like, oh, no, Emily's a bit weird, but I guess she was here for 300 years before I showed up, you know, or whatever. Kind of, kind of reminds me of Beetlejuice. Yeah, so that it kind of is a bit like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so that's so that's the crack. There's there's another um, ghost then that they call um, the murdered woman, you know. And um, there's there's a lot less explanation about the murdered woman, Mm -hmm. you know, except that she shows up and she's pretty scantily clad and she's trying to cover herself. Okay. And she basically sees you. She screams two loud piercing screams and then she disappears. Hmm. So she's another one of the of the. um, Imagine being bound to a place to like a that? To a place. And just being embarrassed. You are the ghost that is just permanently, perpetually, <laughs> for eternity, living the nightmare of being seen in your underpants. Like, <laughs> imagine that is such torture. <laughs> it's, um... <laughs> that is, like... My worst nightmare. If I come back as a ghost, I don't want to be like, ah, I'm naked. One one time I was in um <laughs> horrible. I was in Cheltenham. Um, oh vi- dear. Um, I had because I had gone to university in Cheltenham. Do you, you know? want this to be on the internet? I just think it's a it's an amazing story. Right? <laughs> and I had met this. I was supposed to be going back that day, and then a friend of mine convinced me to stay, and he was like, "Look." Me, two two friends of mine, they were like, oh, there's an extra bed in our room. We paid for the room. Like, just stay in the bed, man. And, you know, it'll be grand. And, you know, you don't have to drive back today. And I was like, okay, okay, cool. I will, yeah. So we, we all went out and we had a great time. And then we went back to this. Drink a couple pints. Drank a couple of pints. And we went back to this really, this was in November. And we went back to this really cheap hotel that they were staying in. And they were like, look, this is the room. But the bathroom... You had to come out the, you had to come out the the door, you know. Yeah. There's like five or six rooms on each floor. You had to come out the door and go down onto a landing, and then up another landing into the bathroom. It was know? like a community bathroom. Yeah, it was like a communal bathroom for that floor. Like and a dorm room. Yeah, and I mean, I must have got up at about four in the morning to use the bathroom, and um, I, all I know is that I heard a click behind me. And I turned around and I was standing in the street in my underwear and there was snow on the floor <laughs> and it was November and I was freezing and I was stuck out there for two and a half hours before someone came and opened the door. I'm so glad you're alive. <laughs> I swear to God, man, it was it's still <laughs> one of the funniest experiences of my life. Like horrific when it happened. I had to like crouch down and make a make a bowl out of myself and blow hot air down the middle of me. All I was wearing was a pair of underwear. In the snow. <laughs> it was terrible. But anyway, th- and if I had become a ghost at that point, <laughs> I suppose that's... If you had died... If I had become a ghost... <laughs> if you had died, oh I my mean, word, yeah, it's like, you would so, be that guy. People are like coming down to the thing and they're complaining about this guy in the bathroom <laughs> screaming. <laughs> he's, in his, he's in his underwear and he's screaming. <laughs> What kind of underwear? He's like, well, we all wear these wraparound things now in the 23rd century. It looked like <laughs> this looked like 21st century underwear. Oh <laughs> so, so that's 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 one of them. And I suppose, you know, they the Darbys lived kind of happily there, you know, mm-hmm. until one night when they did a crazy seance. <gasps> I suppose I should. Did they point, make a Netflix show out of this. I, I don't know. I suppose I suppose I should point out as well before we go any further because I forgot to point this out when I was talking about the general history of the place. 
is that it, it was burnt to the ground in 1922, which was such a common occurrence. Um, totally not planned. Well, it was it was the Irish Civil War, and they were basically burning down anything. You know, like they they burnt down the RSC barracks here. They burnt down anything. Like the people that owned this as well would have been members of the ascendancy and stuff like that, which would I have mean, made anything, them a, anything, it would have made them a, English, leg, a legitimate really. target at that time. Like yeah, right. So they so they burnt it to the ground in 1922. You know. Okay. And I think that once the dust settled, the family went to at the time the Free State, and they got circa. 22 23,000 pounds in damages um but it's not enough to rebuild the house you know yeah and then after a while at that time they started clearing out the rubble and stuff like that this is in 22 23 you know mm-hmm. and do you remember the bloody chapel yep well they were clearing out the bloody chapel and they found this thing called uh an oblette an oublette Oublet. Oublet. That's what it is. Oublet. Yes. Do you know what that is? Uh, I think I do. But I'm sure that people No, want... do, what do you think it is? Uh, is the oublet... Hold on. That's, it sounds so familiar, but I'm... It's not a planchette. Oublet. What's a planchette? A planchette was the little thingy that you use on a Ouija board. No, it, no, no. It guides. Oh, no, no. That's not, not an oublet. This is a type of, it's a, it's a structure within a building. It's called an oublet. An oublet is a structure in a building. Yeah. Specifically a keep or a castle. What floor is it typically on? You remember this is the bloody chapel. It's on the second floor. Is it the little corner thing? Is it the corner part? It was it was hidden underneath a stone, a flagstone in the floor, and they removed the flagstone. Oh. And it's basically a hole. And a noublette is it comes from the French word. Um, I don't know the French word. I don't even know if I'm pronouncing this word correctly. But it is a it's shaped like um like an egg timer, like a an hourglass you know what I mean yeah it's shaped like an hourglass and then basically it comes from the French word to forget and you would basically take your enemies and throw them into the <gasps> oh and yeah they would, they would they would fall the hole yeah the, it's the, the hole the it's, hole it's the pit you don't come out it's the pit that you forget about oh yeah, my yeah, yeah, god yeah 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 and that's in the corner of that's the, why I know okay it's in the corner of the bloody chapel and See, it is a corner thing. Okay, yeah. sorry. And they had it, <laughs> and they just had it in the corner, like, and you would throw people yeah. in there. They took three cartloads of bones out of it. What? Yeah, yeah. They think there was over a hundred and fifty people in there. Whoa. Um, and this is over the whole course of it. They even found like Dude. a they found like an eighteenth century pocket watch. So they think it was still in use in the eighteenth century. Like, oh my. And that's in the corner of the bloody chapel. And this is the same corner that, you know, yes. you remember I was talking about your man, the, the priest. Yeah, and yeah, his yeah, son, yeah. yeah the, he, and his brother. Yeah, he's often seen standing in that corner. And then when someone sees him, he just ducks right out the doorway that's right beside it and up mm. up the spiral staircase or whatever. Like. Mm. Yeah, yeah. And that's that's one of the things. Let's. Onto the side of the house as well is a structure called the priest's house. And that's where, not this guy, because it would have been built later. Yeah. But that's where, the, they, like, they were that rich, they had their own in-house priest. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Like, Down to we are not a climate for, for swimming pools, but if you want to show off to people, <laughs> you gotta, you know, your pet priest. In-house priest. <laughs> you know? Please. What do you mean? No, I know. I never go to mass down in town. No, I got my own private priest. Well, you know, after the the panini, like maybe people will start having their own home priests again. Yeah, or you could you could make it like in espresso machines or whatever. You just have little single serving priests. Um, but they had 
so the the priest house got burnt down at that time you know and after that like again your one Mildred Darby has all these stories about weird experiences she had in the priest's house, you know? Yeah. And she was saying like that any time she was in there, she, she wrote this, by the way, incidentally, in the Occult Review. Uh, she was no. saying any time that she was inside in the priest's house, that um, she could feel things brush off her, you know? And feel uh, breath on the back of her neck, Ew. you know? Um uh, hear the shuffling of an animal, you know, yeah. like a dog or a wolf, like, like that, you know what I mean? Don't like that. And then she's saying that one day she was in there and um, a figure, a figure seemed to, to rest upon the bed because she could see the outline of a human body depress the, uh, the claw clothing and the, uh, duvet and what ghostly have you. Ghostly butt cheeks. Ghostly butt cheeks. <laughs> and she was saying that all this. But then local legend has it like that after 22, like 1922 and the Irish Civil War when it was burnt to the ground, mm -hmm. that you still see lights emanating from the windows like there's someone in there reading by candlelight or whatever. And <gasps> you occasionally hear all these noises and stuff like that as well. Is it really awfully far? <laughs> It is. It's awfully, awfully far. Is it far. really fa awfully far? It's awfully, awfully I want to see this. There's another... Um, <laughs> there's so much in this place, to be honest. There's anymore. another... Anymore. There's another thing as well about, like... Do you know the way, like, I was saying that it... You know, it's been going for, like, oh, 750, 800 years at least, you know? Yeah. And that's not including all the Iron Age and Neolith, possible Neolithic connections and all that. Mm -hmm. And it was, it was very, very, like, they remodeled it. The Darbys remodeled it in the late 19th, early 20th century. Mm -hmm. There was another kind of tranche of remodeling um, by the O'Carrolls right before the Darbys took over. Mm -hmm. And then that would have been continued by the Darbys. And what they were doing was that the old castles that they had were becoming obsolete because you could get cannons and stuff like that. You know? What? So, you know, like, like an, a castle is great against, like, guys with bows and oh, arrows like and stuff. But like... if you get a cannon and you roll a cannon up there, you know what I mean? Wouldn't like you just six, build 16th. a defense around your existing castle. Yeah, so there was serious remodeling and stuff like that. Yeah, and a lot of these old, so they would have built these like star fort kind of projections. You know what I mean? That would have their kind of standard thing against um, kind of cannon warfare and stuff like that. You know? Okay. I mean, most of the information I have about it comes from Civ, but do you know, Civ Five from the, all of them. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but uh, so they would have done extensive remodeling like that and as part of it they would have remodeled the entrance and stuff like that and they would have removed the murder holes yeah and this is kind of an aside that Lady um, Mildred Darby um, wrote about you know her experiences in the room of the murder hole mm -hmm. you know where um, she would have kind of, what's it called? Like, um, d there's, d she would have experienced kind of ghostly echoes of the, the stuff that took place. You know what I mean? Been up there. Her oh, so she was like channeling. No, like her dog is kind of like terrified or something like that. You know what I mean? And she's not sure. And then. She realizes that the dog seems to be barking at someone that's pouring like hot pitch down a murder hole <laughs> or she'd be down below. <laughs> and again, she can't see it directly or anything like that, but she can tell uh, the horrible things that took place in this room. You know what I mean? Like someone's... She's a medium. She's a medium or another way of looking at it <laughs> is that she is a writer of gothic <laughs> horror. <laughs> That's sending letters to the Occult Review James, in London. How dare yeah. you with the accusation? She's a medium or, <laughs> or, me, or a or large a or a large. Um, 
<laughs> so that's so that's that's the crack anyway with that. Um, Did they? Huh? Do you have more stories or? I'm just trying to do this. The one with the oh yeah, and that okay. that she had been what was it like the because it's a, it's well it's it's actually not that big a castle if you look it up to be honest like it's just a key. It's a hall. Yeah, I mean a lot. Most of the ca- none of the castles that you come across really, unless they're the king's castle, are going to be awfully that big. You know what I mean? But it's, I mean, it's big. It's it's a keep. There's some buildings beside it. There's buildings out the back. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But yeah, so her story with the murder hole is that the dog was there. She could see it. Then they went downstairs. There was more reaction, and then they removed some stuff. And she fancied that she could see some like four hundred year old blood stain on the skirting board. Do you know? And that's okay. part of it. That's part of it. <laughs> so do you want to hear about the real the real haunting at this place? Does this did there was it okay, just answer my question first. What were were archaeologists ever invited? Um yeah, I mean archaeologists have done work on it, yeah. I presume. They, they're the ones that took out the 300 some odd bodies. I don't know if that was actually archaeologists, um, to be honest. Um, but I know I know that they, they have some stuff in there. I don't know if an archaeologist has ever actually like excavated on the site and stuff like that. Sure. But I think that, I mean, like the the information that you have about it being built on an Iron Age fortification and stuff like that, mm-hmm. like that's, I mean, that's basically any. That's that is like that's, the wet dream for for someone like me, yeah. who is very interested in archaeology. There's so much stuff that would be found in there, yeah, but because there, it's in private hands. Obviously, it's not going to be. Well, it's. I mean, like a guy. In the unless it's been turned into like an amusement park. Well, a guy in the late seventies, um, an Australian historian, bought it. Um, his name was Barrett, mm-hmm. and he bought it because his mom's name was Bannon, and it was originally a Bannon fortification. Okay, owned by the Bannon family, and then he would have spent from like the late seventies until nineteen ninety one, um, renovating it. And then I think it was bought in the early noughties by a guy called, maybe his name is Sean Lynch. Um, and he he and his partner, um, they both run it now. And I mean, you can you can find their. I mean, is it like ghost tours? Or? Yeah, basically that's it. Yeah, you come down and you do the thing. Like you can you can phone them up and arrange to come and see the place. Like, and they've been working on it for twenty years now. But like. To say that they've sealed four or five rooms and put in some toilets and they can live in it. Do you know what I mean? Which mm. is what they're doing. And then he has all okay. these he has all these stories about, do you know, like I've seen a few interviews with him on, on um, YouTube and stuff like that. And he's like sitting there in front of the fire, like kind of going, well, I mean, I haven't seen that many ghosts now, to be honest. But, uh, you know, you'd often get the feeling they were there looking at you and... Uh, People that come and visit, uh, they definitely have, uh, they definitely see ghosts, I tell you that much. Uh, do you know, he's, he's that kind of character, like, you know. Okay. Um, I suppose we're going to talk about the actual big haunting at the place. Oh. Yeah. And this is, this comes out of a seance that they had in, like, 1912, you know. Okay. And, um... So was it your one? Or sorry, hang on. In 1908. Ooh. Yeah, in December of 1908. And we know that they had it in December of 1908 or before that because well, Mildred she wrote about it. She wrote a big review for the Occult Review in <laughs> London. Yeah. Um and basically they had a séance. And she said that's during the séance and I quote directly, suddenly Two hands were laid upon my shoulder. I turned around sharply and I saw, as clearly as I see you now, a grey thing. A grey thing? That's correct. Oh no. It was about the size of a sheep. Thin, gaunt, shadowy in parts. 
Its face was human, or more accurately, inhuman. In its vileness, with large holes of blackness for its eyes, and loose, slobbery lips. What? <laughs> and a thick, saliva-dripping jaw, sloping back suddenly into its neck. It was this thing we came to know as the Elemental. The Elemental. Yeah, they call it the Elemental. And, like, um, there's... I. I would have been interested. I didn't really have the time to look into it, to be honest. Like, but I would have been interested because, like, there's loads of different places you can read, and they say, you know, people have suggested where the elemental came from. You know, was it the druids at the Neolithic sites or the Iron Age one that was built upon? You know, or or or, or. perhaps the O'Carrolls, in their need to dominate the area had become enamored with the black arts. <laughs> I like the narrator from The Witcher. <laughs> uh, <yeah. laughs> that's what I'm channeling, yeah. <laughs> and uh, they, they talked about all this. There's even a really interesting... Um, there's really uh, even a really interesting story from the Occult Review <laughs> about oh. a year later where she writes in and says that her husband is really pissed off with her. Because he heard one of the, he heard a noise downstairs. They both heard a noise downstairs mm -hmm. and that they started to run downstairs and she ran out of the room she was in and he ran out of the room he was in. But he gets to the stairs before her. Yeah. So he's going down the spiral stairs, you know. Yeah. And they get down to the main, the main hall, which is usually on the second floor. They get down to the main hall and it has a mezzanine on it. You know the way. Mm-hmm. So they get down to the main hall and he's like, because that's where they think the noise is and they rush into the room and they're standing in the room and they're looking around and then they hear the noise from above it and they look up and there's the elemental returned again. Slobbering. Uh, yeah, slobbering about the size of a sheep with like an inhuman face and stuff. And it's standing in the corner and um, when he looks up at it, he, he exclaims, Hi, stop. And it basically fades back into the darkness of the mezzanine. And he accuses her of having planned this and orchestrated this whole thing. And yeah. he rushes up the stairs onto the mezzanine. And he's trying to work out if she has somebody that she's paid to get dressed up and stuff like this. And he's writing all this to the occult review. And she's like, upon my word, I would never do such a thing. I tell you about the time the bed, uh, like the blankets not, on the bed, made some really weird shapes and stuff. <laughs> What's her name? Uh, Mildred. Mildred Darby. Mildred. 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 She Mildred. she writes under the name Andrew Mary. She has. There was like. Um, she's only written a few books. Like she's written a lot of short stories and got into anthologies and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And she has one book called um, The Hunger, and it's like dreadful stories of the Irish famine and stuff which I thought was a bit cheeky yeah only 50 or 60 years afterwards like it was published in 1913 by a person of what the upper class by an ascendancy by someone in the ascendancy yeah and it was Rude. like so that would have been about 50 or 60 years like there was people that lived through the famine that were still alive then yeah. like um, but at the same time I would have loved it and like the only places they had copies were like the University of Missouri and um, some other university. And I would have had to pay them like cash money to read it. And I'm like, I'm not paying them cash money to read that. <laughs> I suppose. Yeah. I'm sure that someone here might have a copy. <laughs> of Andrew Mary's book. is it? Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Come on, peeps. No, definitely don't. Um... <laughs> Like there's loads, there's loads of other stuff there that I have, but I, let's. The, the the thing about it then is that like, they were saying that, the other ghosts, all of the other ghosts, the red woman, the murdered lady, Charlotte and Emily, the governess and the old man, all of these people, all of these ghosts will make themselves known to you, yeah, except for the elemental, the elemental finds you if you are looking for it. Hmm. like people that have gone there looking for ghosts they they may or may not find the ghosts 
But if you go there and you purposely think that you're going to seek out the elemental, the elemental will find you, you know. Hmm. The, the elemental, interestingly as well, is not a, it's not a person. You know, it was never an ego. Do you know what I mean? It was never a what now? It was never an ego. Like, it was never... Oh, ego, right. Yeah, it was never like, hey, I'm Emily that fell off a wall, or I'm the red lady <laughs> whose baby was murdered by the O'Carrolls. I'm or, that poor person yeah, who's wearing their or underpants I'm the, I'm the for lady. Yes. <laughs> I would have dressed up if I knew I was going to be murdered. <laughs> and it was James. <laughs> It's still, it's still one of the like. Oh my god! You have no idea. Like I have never been as fright, frightened as when I heard <laughs> the door closing brought me to my senses, and I was like, "Oh my god!" Last thing I remember, I was in a hallway. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm outside. Um, so that's pretty much it. And then, like, then there's there's a couple of different stories on here as well from people. With the elemental, but I haven't had enough time to read through them and, and pick out sure, 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 sure. what I think is good. But so what, to, what at, you're saying is you're saying that the, the elemental can only it only comes out if it's it, being it, uh, summoned, basically. Yes, that's pretty much what I'm saying. Yeah. So what you're saying is mm -hmm. that we should go there <laughs> to that castle. To summon the elemental. The slobber demon. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's, I mean, there's one of the stories. It could be an alien. I wanted to kind of quote directly, but there's there's so many of them. Like, there's, there, and they're all from the last 10 years. What like, if it's an alien that got stuck in this dimension? I don't know if it is, like, because there's one lady that. You she, said it had gray skin. She tells the story about how they were, they were going down the corridors. Of the castle, trying to find this elemental, you know, and she really wanted to try and find it. And then her friend that was there was like, this is so boring. Let's get a sandwich. You know what I mean? Kind of thing. <laughs> and she was, it was getting late and they'd been there an hour or two. And she was like, I'm going to go. Are you coming? Yeah, yeah, I'm coming. I'm coming or whatever. And then she went away and she said that she turned around and down the end of the hall there seemed to be, she wasn't sure if it was like a very, very large dog that was like crouched at the end of the hall. Mm -hmm. Or sorry, a very large dog that was sitting at the end of the hall or whether it was like a shaggy, hairy, scary looking person with glowing eyes that was just crouched at the end of the hall. But either way, she was staring at it for a while and then... She went to move towards it and it went around the corner. And at that stage, she was like, I'm getting the hell out of here, you know? Hmm. And then there was other experiences then as well about like, there was one like film crew that came and um, they were trying to film it and they didn't have any luck. And when they packed up all their gear, everybody on the crew reckons that they saw like a weird jobby as well. You know what I mean? About the size of a sheep, they said. Uh, but, but like threatening. A threatening sheep. A threatening sheep. Bad bitch. And, um... <laughs> my ass. Um, but that's... And that's that's the story. Um, hang on. I don't know. I think it might be fun. <laughs> and that's that's pretty much it. Like, I don't... I don't really want to... I don't really want to come face to face with one You don't want to evoke the slobber demon? Yeah, then there was another... Another guy... <laughs> Another guy who was a ghost hunter from Dublin. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Is this the famous one, is it? I don't know, but he was a ghost hunter from Dublin. And he said, like, that they went down and they were going around with the... What do you call those things? Yeah. The electromagnetic yeah. meter that... Yeah. With the bits from... EMF. Ghost. EMF from Bolster. I was about to say EMT, and I from, was like, that's definitely not right. From Bolst Gusters? No way. Ghostbusters! <laughs> from, Go from Ghostbusters. That they, he was going around with Ghost that. Ghostbuster! <laughs> and that he said, like, that, that, that these things work best if you're doing it in the dark. It's like, yeah, no kidding, mate. So he was, he was using it, and then he basically felt this 
thing breathed down the back of his neck and he just ran the hell out of the place. And he was saying like that he's literally been in super spooky places. Like that's that's basically what he likes to do. Like, you know, and he was just saying he's never got out of a place and into his car and the hell out of there as quickly. <laughs> Because the goose boosters. Goose <laughs> boost <laughs> gusters. Boost guster. I'd say it's very um he, hang on, I have a quote from him. I was I about th- to say lofty, but then I realized we weren't talking about loft at all. <laughs> no, 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 no. Oh, that's the other thing as well, that a load of people report um the smell of burning rubber. Oh. Yeah, like the the elemental has a has a really really bad smell, you know. Um, it's an alien. I'm telling you, it got trapped in the dimensions. Uh, this is a quote from the Dublin Ghostbuster. Um, I could hear a sniffly. The s- Dublin. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. That's what that's what he's called, Dublin Ghostbuster. Seriously? Yeah, that's what he calls himself. Yeah. Um, I could. I don't know what kind of busting he's really just like photographing them on. Listen. Do you know? You do you. Do yeah. your hustle. Um, I could hear a sniffly, snorkely sort of noise. And there was a smell. Oh, the smell. A horrid, rotten smell. I'm not athletic. But that night, terror put rockets into my heels. And I shot upwards and outwards, scrambling madly for the doorway. And did not stop until I hit the safety of my car. There you go. Hmm. Um, and I think that's... I think that's about all that I have learnt about um, Lep Castle, the most haunted place in all of Ireland. Mm. I'd have to see it for myself. Mm. Do you want to go to Lep Castle at some stage of the game? Is it? I mean, we could try. What do you think? We could, yeah. 2023? Um, it's definitely not visiting a castle season now, anyway, is it? It's not, no. Um, what do you think, Chet? Should we go? Should we stay in the comfort of our home? Not try to uh, to summon the bee. <laughs> well, I mean, we're gonna we're gonna go and do some exciting stuff. Oh yes! In a week or two, aren't we? We are. So um, I'll have more information about that in tomorrow's video. You'll have to come back and watch for details on that. But, because I have a question for you, so you have to watch that video. <laughs> See, I'm trying to do the yeah, YouTube thing. Yeah, that's the thing. I don't yeah, know anything yeah, about that kind of yeah. thing, yeah. Well, thank you all so much for watching this video. This has been a really fun episode. Thank you very much, James. Do you think? No problem, yeah. It's my pleasure as always, yeah. No problem. No problem. We almost finished an entire section. It's looking good, yeah. We, this episode has gone on longer than an hour, you know this. Has it really? Yeah. Oh. In a good way. I'm sure you can cut this. You need to find me a picture of this red woman. Uh, okay, I'll, I'll find you a red woman, yeah. <laughs> in that barber- an artist's rendition. Yeah, yeah. No <laughs> Not problem, an actual yeah. picture. I'm sure I can, yeah, yeah, yeah. I really like this. It's There's a kind of a, with the way she's like vomiting out the... She's not vomiting. Oh, or my god. I mean, it's, it's hard to say whether the jellyfish are... are coming into her or coming out of her you know what I mean there's a, there's a kind of a Cronenberg body horror feel about the and whole thing and you know thing, what they call you know, that James what's that art art is that what you call art now is it it's, our, it's art you look like art to me <laughs> anyway mm. uh, details about this painting are down below thank you James for hanging out with me today no problem at all for giving us all this really cool information about the stuff and the things Thank you for watching this video, and I hope that you have a wonderful day, a wonderful week ahead, and we'll see you in tomorrow's video. Take care, everyone. Bye, everybody. Bye.